I'm Jeff Pospisil, the 10-Minute Treasurer with practical advice for improving your church's financial future. This is the second part of a five-part series where we're looking at So You Want to Preach on Giving. There are a lot of pastors and preachers out there that just don't feel comfortable about uh, preaching on giving and stewardship and generosity. And they know it's important, but they just don't they're not comfortable or qualified in their own mind. And so what I'm hoping to do is to, to give you a level of comfort, to give you some basic steps on what to think about when you are putting together a message and preparing yourself to give that message. Uh, the first, first part we talked about laying the foundation, very important. If you haven't watched that, I encourage you to watch that. This one, we're gonna talk about picking one point. So when I very first started preaching, um, I, I really didn't do a good job. I remember going out to Sturgis United Methodist Church when Kyle Ryan Hiller was the pastor. And my idea of a good sermon was that it had to have at least three points. And that those points, they either had to rhyme or start with the same letter or some other gimmicky kind of thing like that. And like I said, I really didn't do well. Um, so I asked Kyle to coach me on this. And he gave me this book, Communicating for a Change by Andy Stanley and Lane Jones. And that really did help me a lot and see the importance of picking one point. So the idea is, what is the one thing I want my audience to know? What do I want them to do about it? So that was an important thing for me to understand. And to give you an idea of why this is important. So imagine you live in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, right there in the southeast corner of the state. And you run into somebody that has never been to the world's only corn palace in Mitchell, South Dakota. So you're talking it up and you're telling them about it and why you should go to it. And so Mitchell, South Dakota ends up being your main point. But then you feel compelled to also highlight two more towns and uh, destinations that start with the same letter. So you pick Millbank and you say, oh, and you should also, if you're gonna go to Mitchell, you might as well go to Millbank and see Millbank Central United Methodist Church. And then you also think, well, and if you're going to Millbank, you might as well go to Mission and see Tree of Life. And all of a sudden you've turned what would be normally a simple thing for them to do. Go to Mitchell, 70 miles down the road, you know, it might take a morning or an afternoon or an evening and a person could go and visit the world's only corn palace and come back and it'd be no problem. But now they see these three points on there and uh, if they try to do all three of them, that's an all day thing and you're gonna barely get, uh, get to see anything. So uh, chances are they're just not gonna do it at all. You've taken your focus off of Mitchell and the world's only corn palace and they're not gonna do anything. And that's the way a lot of us feel when you get a three point servant is that you say, well, I don't think I can do all those. So I might as well do none of them. It's almost an all or nothing type of thing. Or if they're all important, we just don't know which one's the most important. You know, it's hard for us to distinguish between that. Everything gets kind of lost and confused. So you need to pick that one destination, that one place, that one point. So how do you get to that one point? Um, this cartoon is part of a book that I'm going through with my youngest Gus. It's the Dogman books, but I like the little kitten. He just keeps asking why and why and why and digging down deeper. And that's really what we need to do is, and that's just a simple exercise you can do is you start out with what you think the one thing you want them to do or know. And you say, well, I want them to uh, give more. And you might ask yourself then why? Well, because I think that uh, a lot of times we get so wrapped up in our possessions and uh, instead of wrapped up in Jesus Christ. And then you ask yourself why? And then you just keep going deeper and deeper until eventually you're gonna find something that really resonates and really sticks something that's just not surface level. So that's that's normally how you might get down to your one point is just keep asking yourself questions, keep thinking about it and writing it out. I mean, writing it out really does help. So an example of this is the point that I usually use is that our giving trains us to trust our God, that there's something about it that we learn to trust God with our finances and then you, if you can trust God with your finances, you can trust God with almost anything else. But that's one of those things that you learn over time after weeks and weeks uh, and years and years of giving, you learn that God is trustworthy with your finances. So he's trustworthy with other things as well. 
And then the next thing is, once you got that one point, everything is built around that. Everything points back to that. You don't tell a story that doesn't point back to the one point. Uh, your challenge points back to the one point. Your scripture points back to the one point. Um, and that is a lot harder than it might seem. A lot of times you'll go through it and you'll just notice that you'll be telling a story and it's pointing off in a different direction. So bring it back in, tell a story that does point to where you want it to go. And that brings us to the end and hopefully I've convinced you to, to choose one point because especially on this, it's easy to, to just dismiss all the message if you're getting multiple points and it's getting confused. So, if this was beneficial to you, I encourage you to like, subscribe, share. And again, this is a ministry of the finance office of the Dakotas Conference of the United Methodist Church, as well as the Dakotas United Methodist Foundation. You can find all of our other stuff online and uh, God bless you until next time.